play that one last one, and then three is triangular factor. So you're going to have to do Tx, a difference of squares. That's it. There's no triangle like what kind of work would do this, and what kind of work would do this. Okay? So we're going to go over the basic work first. So back, factoring by greatest common factor. Perhaps the process of factoring by removing the greatest common factor can be best stated as the reverse distributive property. In the distributive property, one is multiplying a certain factor to all of the terms. In factoring by DTS, you're taking that one thing back up. Okay? So, consider this expression uh, which uses the distributive property. If you had it like this before, what you would do is you would insert that five x squared in both of these. Okay? You do a five x squared times four x four and you get twenty x six to the average. And then you do a five x squared times three and you get fifteen x squared. That's how you would do it if you worked your way backwards, then, right? If you went to the same way. Now factoring is just you undoing that. So you're looking at twenty x six plus fifteen x squared and you're saying, what can I take out of both of those terms? Okay. So 20 and 15, what can I divide? What number can I divide out of both of those? 5. That's the main term. And if we go to 5 out of both of these, right? X6 is X squared. So one of them has two X's and one of them has six X's. So what's the largest X that I can take out of both of them? One has six X's, one has two X's. Two X's, right? I can't take six X's, six X's out of two. I can take 2 out of 3 and 2 out of 6. So that means I can take an x squared out of 2. So that means I can take a 5x squared out of both of them. Okay? So, let's say I look at this. I'm going to look at it down here. So 20x squared plus 15 plus 15, was it? x squared. Oh, that's probably what I should have happened. So he said we can take a 5x squared out. When you take them out, you divide. 20 divided by 5 is what? 4. x to the 6 divided by x squared. Then you have two bases and two exponents. You subtract them. So I like to think of it in this way. I have taken out two x's out of six x's. How many x's am I left with? Four. And then plus 15 divided by 5, which is 3. I have an x squared, so two x's, and I'm taking out two x's. So how many x's am I left with? Not quite so many. Oh, that's not worth it. Oh, okay. So, I can take out a DTF, a greatest common factor of 5x squared out. That's just factoring by DTF. What are you factoring again? If it's squared, you don't know. Okay? So we'll practice some of these. People spot the DTF. Okay, so example one. Factor, whenever you are asked to factor, you must always check for DTF first. You will always check for DTF because sometimes you can't do what the squares because you're supposed to go to DTF. Sometimes you just don't have a DTF. So very particularly, you don't always have to go back to the next time you go to DTF. So we'll do A together. We have 25B to the 5 plus 45B to the 4. Okay? We could write it like this. 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can multiply. Plus 45, 1, 2, 3, we could write it like that. And if that is easier for you, do with that. Okay? What number can I divide out of 25 and 45? Five. I'm going to leave a 5 out front. How many B's can I take out of both of them? It has to be out of both. One. How many more? Two. Two. Three. Four. Out, so, four. so <laughs> this one has four B's, this one has five B's. Maximum that I can take out of both of them is four B's, right? I can't take five of them out of four. It doesn't work. So I can take one B out. No, sorry. Another B 
be out. Get out of the out. Get out of the out. So I can take out four. If I take out five out of 25, I'm left with five. If I take 40 out of five of them, I'm left with one of them. What? 45 divided by five is what? Nine. Nine. Take 40 out of 40. So, this looks a little silly. I would never write it like this. I would write this as 5 to the 4 times 5 to the 49. So, if you want to expand them out every time, say, 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 So, here I have 9k to the 4 plus 12k to the 3 minus 6k. What can I take out of divide out of nine, twelve, and six? Three. Three. Okay. Now I have four k, so k to the four, three k, k to the three, and one k. How many k can I take out of this? I have to get out of all three. One, right? I can't take out more than one because you only have one k. Nine k to the four divided by three k. What's nine divided by three? Three. What's k to the four taking out another k? Okay. This could all be reviewed as a math. Twelve divided by three. Four. K to the three take out a k. Six divided by three k. Six divided by three. K divided by k is actually one. Six divided by three. You see how this has a minus sign and the sign of a three. K okay, no change five. Okay. We'll repeat it. We'll do two together and then we will the five. 8x squared plus 10x. 8x squared plus 10x. We're going to take out of 8 and 10. 8 divided by 2, 4. Oh, I'll put it on that. Right? So I can take out a 2, and then I have an x squared and an x. So I can take out an x, too, right? X as well. 8 divided by 2 is 4. x squared divided by x. x. 10 divided by 2 is 5. X divided by X is 1, 2. It's all together, right there, Marker. Oh, okay. Now I get to get up on the button. We'll get it back. You see a button. Okay. Okay. You can go get my own Marker, too. Okay. Try it. Okay. 12y minus 16, you can take out a 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3y, minus 16 divided by 4 is 4. This one, uh, you can take out a positive 16 u cubed or a negative 16 u cubed. When the first one starts with a negative, I often just take the negative out because that's just usually what they do in order to get canceling terms in that sense. Common to negative 15, if you take out the positive 15, that's fine. Just go right along. Negative 15 is equal Negative 15 out of negative 15 is positive 1. B squared. 45 divided by negative 15 is actually negative 3. And then the B cube by the B cube is 1. If you had took out a positive 15 u cubed, and you have negative u squared plus 3, that's fine. F, I can take nothing out of 13 and 20, and I can take nothing out of A and B, it's done. There's nothing I can do to F. D is the one that you mess up on. This is why when I said when you take a C out of C, you're actually left with 1, you're not left with 0. There's a big difference. Everyone messes this up. It's just you're going to put a star beside it. So, I can take a C out of here. If I take a c out of c cubed, I'm left with c squared. Plus a c out of c squared, I'm left with c. I take a c out of c out of c squared, I'm left with c squared. Plus a c out of c squared, I'm left with c squared. Plus a c out of c squared, I'm left with c squared. Plus a c out of c squared, I'm left with c squared. Plus a c out of c squared, I'm left
in the left hand, minus one. Because b divided by c is like this. b divided by c is not zero. b divided by c, they cancel off the one in the left hand. A one. Okay, not a zero, this is different. If this had been like this, say this is c cubed plus c squared plus c, instead of a minus, I think it's zero, I'd still like to like say c squared plus c plus one. It's still like that one left, okay? It doesn't just go away. C divided by c is one. If some of you make an error and there's this one away, start, because you're going to make that error again. Very fast. Eight, you can take on a six. And then that's like n squared minus five n plus seven. What's the great thing about putting that two around? You need to check if you're factored. Because you don't factor. Right. It's how we do personal schools. And the personal one says monomial and binomial. Mm -hmm. You're factored. I, nothing. Seven and seven are both prime numbers. You can't take any time. Could you pull on minus one if you really wanted to? Sure. You could get negative one out and change all the time. So you could have done that. Absolutely. Okay. 18 c cubed minus 63 c squared minus 19. I can take out a 3. You can take the 18. <laughs> Dynamic reporter. Okay, so we can take out a three piece. 18 C cubed, so it's on a three cube. Your left hand, 18 by the three, which is six. C cubed, take away a three, which is first. Minus 63 divided by three is 21. C squared, take away a three, which is two. Minus nine, negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. 2 divided by 3 is 1. So the 1 really only needs to be represented if whatever is behind the minus or plus sign is capital to the graph. Yes. Well, overachiever is taking up the right number. <laughs> Take another three, Adrian. I'm going to tell that. I feel completely okay. Yeah. 
square root of 25 y squared? Five y. So we'll put it here. Give us a square root. What signs do I have to have in both of the factors? Plus or minus? Two minus plus one? Does it matter as long as it goes off the side? So plus, minus. If 3x is first, it has to be first in both x. If 5y is the top, it has to be second. Okay? L. Where did you go? 25 what? 25. Yes. 25. Red 5. I see red all the time, except for when it's in the opposite. When I see it's in the opposite. What's this? Okay. You guys are your graduating this year. This is your last year, and it's my daughter's first year. Button. 
or she has to try their last booster. Um, the ones that people don't mm -hmm. spot often are the ones with the one to get to the first one is one. And that one gets left all the time. So you get that. So try it out. What's your third of Mary and Anne Square and Emma?
defining the NPV. The best way to find the NPV, the first step would be factor. That's an omnitor. If you're just looking at the NPVs of restrictions, you don't care what the numerator is at the top of it. What that numerator at the top of it. You don't care. The rough list of values are what the denominator can be, if it was that. Um, so we make the denominator be 0 or 10. Can't divide by 0. So once we factor the denominator, we set it equal to 0. Or not equal to 0. I don't know if it's And then that's that variable. Okay? So the y back of the denominator would be 0. So look at example 1. Consider the rational expression x plus 1 over 5x squared minus 5x. We so want to determine the non symmetrical value for what the, what the variable can be. The non symmetrical value for it can be. First thing you do is look at the denominator. I don't care what the numerator is. It can, it, it can be whatever number. The numerator can be 0. Because in your calculator, you still 0 divided by 7. 0 divided by 7 is 0. The calculator is fine with that. So, however, you can't go 7 divided by 0. So the denominator can't be zero, but your numerator can be. So, first thing you want to do is take that denominator and factor. So we have five x squared minus five x. So add the difference of squares of GCX if possible. If it's not possible, you can go right ahead and look for x. So then, how do you figure out five x squared minus five x? You have five x. Now watch the solves here. This is where I'm going to say not to put values wrong. Not because we can't solve for the not to put the y correctly, it's because they check the wrong. They check the CCS correctly. So I take a 5x out of here. When I take a 5x out of 5x squared, what am I left with? X. When I take a 5x out of negative 5x, what am I left with? Negative 1. If you put 0, you get your x to zero. Negative 5x squared divided by 5x and left with a minus 1. It's going to give you a totally different non principal value. On the diploma, when they write the formal expression for you, when they write the formal so I was just writing the third F1, you get the correct answer, and then your next three multiple choice answer has to be common error. If the errors that you write are not common enough for them, they fill out the question. They don't turn your diploma. So all three answers on the multiple choice are going to be your first common errors that all of you are going to get. So what will I say when I see this? Oh, they're going to turn it to 1, they're going to turn 0, and I'll turn the NPV to this back. Okay? That's just going to be a second. So you'll forget the 1. That's going to manipulate up um, backwards and forwards because the common error is there. So you think you got it right at least. Okay? So, first thing I told you to do is factor it. Anything that could pass this plus or minus times the bracket here. Anything that's not attached with plus or minus times the bracket here. So, this 5 and x are not attached. They're not, they're not plus or minus signs. So I take every single thing that is not attached with a plus or minus sign and put it in bracket. Okay? So the 5, the x, then the x minus 1 are attached together, so I put them in their own bracket. Then you check what would make them 0. So I go 5 can't equal 0. Well, that's true. 5 can never equal 0. I'm not going to get an NPV from 5. It's a number. It can never be 0 or 5. Okay? So don't worry about that. Then I say x can equal 0. So the one in the bracket. And I say x minus 1 can equal 0. So anything that is in this own bracket after that I set cannot equal to 0. 5 can equal 0, that's true. x can equal 0. I'm done by 1 NPV. x can be 0. This one has to still solve for x, so I'm going to add one to both sides. X can't be two sides. So what are my two NPVs? I can write them together and I can say x can't equal 0 or 1. Because if it equals 0 or 1, I get a 0 in the denominator. Let me prove it to you. So, I'm going to plug 0 in here and see if I get a 0 in the denominator. 5 times 0 squared. 5 times 0 squared is 0. Minus 5 times 0 is 0. What's 0 minus 0? Zero? 0. So I know this one's correct because it was caused by denominator to 0. Now I'm going to try the 1. 5 times 1 squared. 1 squared is 1. So 5 times 1 is 5. Minus 5 times 1 is 5. What's 5 minus 5? 0. See, both of these, when I plug them in separately, get me a 0 in the denominator? Yes. Yeah. So I know I'm right. Because 
I'm saying you know, I can't think if it was that, I said I'm going to do it. Being easy, so think of restrictions on the variable. X can be zero or one. Why did I put this? Because what people need to realize is restrictions and non permissible values mean the exact same thing. They can be called vice versa either way. They can ask you what are the non permissible values in the formula, or they can say what are the restrictions on the variable in the formula. They mean the same thing. There's no more work that's used. It's the exact same thing again. Remember how in grade 10 and 11 they say root or zeros or x intercepts? They said those are the same word. They all mean x intercepts. Same thing here. Non permissible values and restrictions mean same thing. They can just ask it either way. I don't know why. Let's take that. It makes you break So let's look here. Determine the non-commercial values for each of the following expressions. If they only ask for the non-commercial values, they don't ask you to do anything else. You literally just look at the denominator. So I have a minus one. First thing I ask myself, can I DCF or difference to square this? It's a minus one. No. So it's in its own bracket, which is the tax for a minus sign. Anything that's in this bracket, you set not equal to zero. So, a minus one can't equal zero. Then you solve for the a. Add one. A can't equal one. Let's see if we're correct. Put one back in. What's one minus one? Zero. When you plug back in your non permissible values, your denominator should be zero. If it's not, you have the wrong denominator. You have the wrong answer. So, with a multiple choice step. Your diploma. Could you plug your answer, multiple choice answers back in to each one to zero? Yes. If not always, if you're stuck, you can always look your way back from multiple choice answers, right? Don't forget that option. B, I have 4 over 2k squared minus k. First thing I ask myself is for the denominator, can I think of a DCF or difference to square? So I can't put a DCF for difference to square. It's fine. And like totally out of the But it is right now just about eight. <laughs> it's about 745. So you guys really need to go home. It's a clock. It's also one right here. I really don't know. I'm not going to say that. Okay, so 2k squared minus k. If you take a k out, if you take a k out, you're left with 2k minus what? 1. This k is by itself. Anything that's by itself in a bracket, you set number 2 to 0. You don't have any anything you're going to get from this one. At least 2, right? Because you have two brackets. And you see why I say it. Um, so this one can be two because it's not square, I guess. So the second is equal to not equal to zero. K can't equal zero. Two K minus one can equal zero. This one's done. K can't equal zero. Solve for it. So now I'm just like I just solve like normal. So I have to do addition and subtraction first, right? So I'm gonna add the one up. So I get 2k can equal 1. How do I get rid of the 2 that's all cut by the k? So k can equal a half. So what are my non commercial values? k can equal 0 or a half. Do I care what the numerator has in it? If it's just asking for an FED? You try C and D. Here, C is bigger than D, yes. D is just a square. Okay. So for C, you can take a 2 of, and I'm left with N plus 5. Now I can go to the answer to 0. But it can't equal zero. It's not going to get me an answer. But I can go n plus 5 can't equal zero. So 
n stands in for what? Negative y. Because remember this, we have to subtract. Check it. Keep your right. Turn in negative 5. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. What's negative 10 plus 10? 0. So we know we're right. If when we plug it back in, we do 0 again. X squared minus 49. Is the difference you square? X squared minus 49. Two terms of the minus sign. Always check. The square root of X squared is X. Square root of 49 is 7. That means that X plus 7. X minus 7. So I'm going to check them both separately times 2. X plus 7 times 0. Minus 7 times 0. That's 7. That's 7 times 7. That's 7. And so what I can do is I can put them together and I can write it as x can equal positive or negative 7. That's how you see it. So we're going to try the top Now you have this one separately, so you're going to take 2 times equal to 0, and that one's done already. And then you're going to have 14 minus 1 times equal to 0. What's the first thing I move? 14 minus 1. So what? We're going to do. Exactly. So I'm going to get 4 t times equal 1, and then you divide by 4. 2 times equal to 4. This one messes with people or something on here. So you can take a 2 out and you're left with x squared plus 4. People say that's x plus 2, x minus 2. It's not a different square. There's no different sign. But if you're this is a square, you're not going to get any confused. I'll put it back. So I can't stack it. So I'm going to go x squared plus 4 times equal 0. Move my 4 over. So I get x squared times equal negative 4. I'm going to square root both sides. And when I get the square root of a negative number, what happens? And whenever you take a square root, you always have to take the plus or minus of it anyways, but you can't take the square root of anything further. There is no number that I can fill in x here that will give me 0. Because when you square any number, it becomes positive. Right? So if I go 2 squared, it's 4. 4 plus 4 is 0. I need whatever I fill in here to be negative 4. 
if I can get negative 4 here, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, right? Is there anything that I can fill in here that will give us a negative 4? No. Because even when you square a negative, it's a positive. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. Negative 4. Okay? There's no way that we're going to get this to be um, 